competitive snacking, Susie's dream, and 30 seconds with Amy. All this and more on today's Brilliant Observations. Do, 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 do. Oh, Melissa, happy Peshach. Is that how we say it? I love the visual, if you're my husband, I love the visual of you blowing the microphone on the 30 seconds with Amy, only (laughs) because I'm going to assume you're implying, okay, there's a lot of infer imply going on, that a Hummer takes only 30 seconds. And as a human with TMJ, I'm all in. So whatever it is. Yes. Okay. A blow job. First of all, I hate to come out right out of the gate with blow job content. And yet you on Holy it. Saturday, here we are. Thank wah, you, Jesus. Wah, wah. So number one, my son, who is going to a university. What's the matter? I'm oh, stroking gross. out because no, you don't be went. gross. Don't be gross. Don't be gross. You gotta wait for it. You gotta wait for it. I take a long preamble. Our listeners know. Put your eyebrows down. Put okay, your, go ahead. Close I'm your eyes. You. I don't talk about my children and blow jobs because that's sickening. He's going to college where they're having blowjob festival. They're having a community wide education effort and they quite literally call it. And this is real. It's legit. I have the flyers BJ's in your PJ's. Not fucking kidding. Is that at all colleges? And was it done as a joke or is it just at this particular college? Because I've seen it mocked outside the college before I was like, that's not real. And then I was like, no, that's that's legitimately real. And it's happening in the second year. BJ's in your PJs. And BJ in this reference stands for Ben and Jerry's in your pajamas. BJ's in your PJs. But the tongue is in the cheek. I fucking because it's love a discussion. that title. It's a discussion of sexuality. So they want, and it's like, can IUDs be covered on school insurance? Like it's totally I intentionally love it. cheeky. BJ's in your PJs. I think PJs in your PJs. I think you now instituted um, a Thursday night event this summer at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, I don't like the group component of this. I can't get past BJ. Always means BJ. BJ always means blowjob. When you're BJ little, does not BJ's mean anything means else. A warehouse store where you get no BJ's a lot has of toilet always paper. Meant blowjobs. BJ's the warehouse came after blowjobs. The knowledge. For sure. So we were smart as kids to go. He, he, In a he, sense, he, he, lost. He, he. BJ's is, didn't come into our market until, I guess, late teens. So I don't know how long the BJ's Corporation goes back, but blowjobs certainly predate it. I'm here to say. So I have, that's number one, BJ's and your PJ's. That's number <laughs> one on the list of the bestest. Number two came from my second night Passover frond. Um First of all, it is Passover currently. So congratulations. If- happy. I tried to send you a text and I didn't know what, if it was happy or because this isn't about like our oldest didn't get killed. Yay. So they I mean, it's kind of scary. Us again, we right. killed a goat and we put its blood on our door frame. So the angel of death. So congratulations. We a liar. And that's how we stayed alive. You too stupid to know from human or goat blood. Fuck you. But isn't that Every Jewish holiday, they came for us. We prevailed. Drink wine. That's truly the exact purpose of all of these things. Some have a more colorful story. Some put it in a a, a two scroll thing, and some put it in a rod scroll thing. It's it's usually in a scroll. I said rod scroll. Um, and I will get back to that. But at Passover Seder number dose, my dear friend Joel said. Yeah, I want to open up a place with my buddy called Tits and Tots. Wow. And I said, I am fucking stealing that shit from you right now. It's going to be the Hooters. The Hooters. It's Hooters. It's Jooters. (laughs) Yeah, the Hooters. The Potato Hooters is what it is. So, I don't know why he has to be Jewish when he could just be misogynist, but okay. So tits and tots, tits and tots. That's how we came upon it. We were it's singing. It's super pervy name. <laughs> yeah, it's super gross. We were singing a chorus line <laughs> and it came up with tits. As one does and, on and, the second Passover. <laughs> so, yeah, I it is Passover. And I, I will tell you that I shed some tears on the first night, as most Jews did back in the days of Pharaoh when they were slaves in Egypt, 
but I did it because I don't have family. What? I this holiday crept up on me and for years everybody else was <laughs> everybody else was going about their business. I have a sister-in-law that I don't think I have thanked enough uh -oh. for always hosting holidays, but this holiday specifically. Yeah. I I she's in Portugal, which is fucking nervy of her on a holy day when I am sustained by the kindness of others to make a brisket. So right. right. I made my own brisket this year after spending the first night at Bonefish. Yeah, I heard about that. that but was you're a good at one. brisket. It was pretty you're, good. It was your okay. brisket yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't going to make latkes because latkes require like a certain degree of matzo meal or what they're not as good as really good latkes so I went to Trader Joe's and I got tater tots right so I read the ingredients on the Trader Joe's bag and it just said potatoes I thought this is this is Passover friendly so I made that instead so that is how Joel came by tits and tots because it absolutely brought it back and I his son was there at Passover Seder two or for me one and he's like, well, I think it should be mobile. And I smack the table. I'm like, yes, you need a you need like a food truck for tits and tots. And you need very well endowed women to just hand out those little paper boats full of tots with cheese and bacon and all the stuff on it. And all of a sudden we have a full business plan. Stuart knows a guy with a truck and would you like some tots is what I'm trying to say. So we can have BJ's in your PJ's while you eat tots and look at tits well I don't love the objectification of women or potatoes however I will say or potatoes <laughs> I will say there is merit in the marketability of this prospect if so, you ask my son he will tell you yeah I know Hooters they have the best wings because he's been trained by his father to say they have the best wings it's the reverse ice cream truck and all we have to do is have operating hours between 10 p.m., uh, 9 p.m., and 4 a.m. And all you have to do, it's 9 to 4, but reverse, 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. I love that shift. And you're 30 minutes away, and all you have to do is call the Tits and Tots truck, and it will roll up to your party, and you can do a prefix it's where you can prepay the truck, and everybody gets everything that they want, and the bill goes directly to you. Or we can do... Uh, Stripe card and everybody who as wants to pay go. as they go, as you go, right? And it's nothing but greasy, hot, freshly fried, loaded tot boats served to you in a tiny tanked Amazonian delecticon, right? Who wants to also be super nice? She's going to be so nice. She'll be lovey dovey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a yeah. sudden you're signing on for the truck, yeah. aren't you? No, no, I think it's awful, but I also know that we would make <laughs> millions. And I'm interested in millions now. I'm I'm folk I'm refocusing slowly on I gotta start earning bitches. It's time for me. This this college thing is really hitting home. When the college savings account for the other child covered five years plus an international trip to Prague and the college savings account for the second child barely scrapes its head at one year yeah and they were you know kind of almost the same amount not true the the first account was larger because he's older but um anyway that's crazy it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy but they also tell you you get what you pay for we were looking at going to a school like brown and we thought holy fuck that's actually comparable to the college your son is going to price wise and I thought all right but you're building a Rolodex you're building and then my kids are like what the fuck is a Rolodex and I thought oh, fuck you that's why you're going to college you stupid stope <laughs> why don't you go sit down and get a BJ and your PJ <laughs> you wish you got to go to private college for that wah, wah, wah. I have to now go make millions of dollars and I think tits for tots is the way to do no, it which also sounds like strippers who are raising money for cancer kids <laughs> no tits and tots <laughs> ah, ah, that's it business idea i got millions of um so millions i say as you're talking i'm creating a fleet in my head of all of these places and i'm watching them pour out of a lot which looks a lot like our um postal and you know we lot. have a we have a companion truck just for the ladies and we can you can actually ha book both of them the same night 
Go ahead. You know what it is. It's, you know what it it's is. It's wieners, but I don't know how. Dicks and dogs. <laughs> Let's bring it. Okay? So you can get you a beautiful flat top griddled hot dog with fresh fried onions and mustard slathered all over and maybe some chili and sauerkraut if that's your bag or cheese. It's going to come to you and it's going to be served up by a Chippendales busting out shirtless fucking fireman and just head next door where you're going to get your tits and taters. And then we're all going to have an orgy on the lawn and Amy gets kids to go to college. Let's do it. Oh, my God. Uh, these are all trademarked ideas. So back off, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We've already it's it's patent pending. I would like you to know that I have a, a hot dog guy and he has carts and you were at our B'nai Mitzvah seven years ago. And the Dicks carts I had and dogs. He was there, but he also brought um, the new carts. So he had the little tiny donut cart. And he had, which I'm sure you saw there, it was his first, it was the pilot of the, the cart. And I fucking ate donuts in that tiny dress I was wearing, as well as the cotton candy cart. So dessert time, we used him, but I never used him for hot dogs. Stuart does for all of his holiday parties. So <laughs> I like the idea of, oh, and if you're looking on the East Coast in the tri-state area, it's Gourmet Vendor. Look him up. He's he's fantastic. He brings all these amazing carts to you. I just did a commercial that I'm not getting paid for. So, Brad, you're welcome. I'll see you at the shore first round. Yeah, it's you. time for you to roll up with those fried up open hole circles and fill my face with some donuts. And I gave, Holy. obviously, if you're listening, you got the idea for tits and tots. Yeah. And I, I, I will take payment in donuts. And Amy will take payment in uh, college tuition vouchers bingo please. that's a bingo bingo bango if you will just roll up to bj's in your pjs and that's surely got to cover me for one semester so i kind of feel like you during covid easter remember your first time you didn't travel and you thought i'm uncomfortable in my skin i'm not with my family i feel a little depressed i feel a little a lot all of those feelings and it kind of sucked and now yeah. this is the holiday that no Jew likes. I mean, you don't get to eat. You're constipated for seven days. You're having matzah. Matzah pizza was the first one I made last night. Tuna on matzah. Egg salad on matzah. And then the really devout Jews get their shrimp salad on matzah. Very not kosher. So I don't like it in the first place to kick it off with a you have no family, you have no friends. Kind of sucked. So I said, that's it. I'm taught and brisketing my way through. And th our friends were nice enough to bring their kids. So I kind of felt like we had full house, full family. And it was, it became Aren't your great. children home? Weren't you making a big deal about your children being home? One was Did they go back to week. their learning institution? Absolutely. This isn't a holiday they were given off for. I could have picked up one of my kids because she's super close. But she said, no, thank you. Which was hurtful but I lumped it because it's not about me and I have to take my feelings and like Book of Mormon taught me shove them down really far and turn Way them off deep. like a yeah. light switch just turn it off <laughs> and I I tried I really did try but I did also find out just last night that a dear friend with whom you spent some time recently being pulled by dogs is sending her oldest child to the University of Delaware where she will be where she will be visiting with me, her son, and we will yeah, it'll be great. It'll so be great. proud of him. So proud of him. Such a hard decision. He of course was accepted into his number one program, which is not the University of Delaware, but he did additional research and decided that the University of Delaware was actually a better program for him than the one his heartstrings have been pulling him toward all this time. Can you imagine being that mature? And no, now, wise, no, no. <laughs> as a youth, it's crazy. It's crazy. So mad props and big spectaculars because I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm saying this like it's still eight minutes from my house. And indeed, it's not. It's eight hours from my house. But I also feel like it's closer to my backyard than his other choice would have, would have been all the way on the other side of the planet. So which is closer to his family and closer to where you were visiting. So that's indeed, indeed, super indeed, indeed, interesting. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Everybody's making their um, declarations of colleges these these weeks right now. The Ivies came in the very short list again. 
And and I'm watching all these posts and I'm thinking, thank fucking God I am not doing this anymore. <laughs> I am well, so I tell grateful. you, I saw the funniest thing on TikTok. For some reason, the thing now is to sit and record your all on IV day yeah. to record <laughs> all of your IV acceptances. Right. So everybody's sitting there and going like, I got waitlisted, but I got in here. I got in here. I got in here. And all the parents are crying and the guys are sitting there. And then they have this one kid and it listed all of his uh, credentials. <laughs> And they were, of course, better than anyone's credentials 5. Have, have ever been. What the fuck is and that? And it was Ivy Day. <laughs> and he got 100% rejected everywhere. And he had what was someone from a sports team or a friend. I think they were wearing jerseys, which makes me think that they were like, uh, you know, Teammates. probably on the same team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who sit next to him mocking him the entire time on TikTok. So he said, so it wasn't sad. It was super crushingly sad, but at the same time, it was fucking hilarious because the one, oh, he goes, okay, here it is. Here it is from Harvard. Yeah, you got rejected. Rejected, rejected. <laughs> and the guy goes, oh, and then it would open the next one. And then they would go, whoa, and they were like laughing and going, ha, <laughs> And pointing at him and crying. And the kid's sitting there the whole time like, fuck me, I can't believe this shit. And then when it would come in again, it was almost like, I don't know, it was just the best mockery I've ever seen. Because he kind of he kind of expected it. Like, it makes me feel like the whole thing was a joke anyway. So did you find out it. at all where he is going? No, he was 100% rejected from every Ivy. Yeah, I've that was in the several. captions. I've seen and he several had, of those. And he had, and he, honestly, he it was... It was just, I'll pull it up and find it. And you know I never will on the uh, group. <laughs> so so there's your lie for today. So that's it. Have fun that I won't do it. I intend to. But I do I love. That, I have that feeling in my heart that I would give it to you. I do love that they say, I have a 5.2. I was valedictory. And I was all of these things. And still, every single one, one after the other, the ancient eight all said, go fuck yourself. And I thought, well, what do you want? Like, do you need a, a life of trauma, which you've overcome? Why can't you just accept people who worked super fucking hard and accomplished many, many things so they don't? And fuck Ivy's was what it I has came nothing to. to do. It has nothing to do with hard work is the answer. It hard has work, absolutely nothing work. to do. Let me say it in a different way. Hard work is the benchmark. Hard work is the baseline. So everybody worked extremely hard. Don't care show me something else and the something else can be as esoteric as we need someone from your state and this week it's you right we need we need whatever sparkly mix you happen to have and it has really very little to do with anything that you could have tried for since kindergarten so the expectation is the thing that we need to rail against not the admission standards. i thought that about ridiculous delaware schools. delaware i was like you needed long island jews like you were low <laughs> on those so that's why you took me okay i'll take it whatever you got i'll take you um you looked a little nervous when i said 30 seconds with amy do you want to bang it out real fast I love banging it out because I am your tits and tots entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I can't see get also over that. dicks and dogs. Yeah, bring it. Um, oh, dicks and dogs. And then we'll have like dogs, actual dogs will come with it. So you can pet a dog while you get the hot dog from the firemen's and puppies. I feel like this business is taking off. Do I volunteer with a rescue now that I think would be fantastic for this. Just as an aside, I saw something that made me think why is Melissa's second, third, 19th act not? starting and running your own rescue why is that not what you're doing why are you not running a rescue Stuart got mad at me when I said I got recruited and I'm working on primary day here in Pennsylvania I'm, as he likes to say I'm working the polls and working with these animals he's like is this going to get in the way of our summer <laughs> is this going to get in the way with being away all summer fuck you just... democracy <laughs> yeah okay democracy canines fuck all of that like it might mess up mine a little, but I think you'll be fine. We have still have yeah, two cars. Last time I checked, I feel like you're going regardless of whether I'm going to the beach house, which you already do. Hey, can you? Okay, tell so me you're gonna side. You're gonna sidestep the whole. Why is Melissa not running a rescue? Correct. Why is that you, not? Can you tell you're, me? You're your just. Why are you not gonna do it? Why are you not gonna do it? Rise up, listeners. Find us on all the socials for bebop.net and also click clack. Go to the places where she says it every fucking week. 
and send in your thing. Melissa needs to start a rescue because she kind of already fucking did in her own house. All right, 30 seconds, my ass. I'll do it. I'll do whatever you say. Two things. One, I'm a rescue fail. So the rescue False. needs support in 30 other ways than than just foster slash adopt. So I, no, I will help I don't them in mean all the indiv- other ways. I don't mean individually. I mean as the figurehead, as the business owner, as the person who gathers up these dogs and She's houses sad. them in a piece of land that you acquire for their purpose and let them run and frolic together. And then you go home at night and the night team comes and you don't have these dogs in your howabas. I'm going to stop you there because I just <laughs> came at the thought of a night team. So I am all <laughs> in. I don't even know what they do, but I want a night team and I need them now. See? See, what is your favorite you. sport? Amy? I got you as a girl oh, who doesn't watch sports. What's your favorite sport? It's a difficult question to answer. Give me more context to watch. Oh, uh. <laughs> is none a sport? Competitive baking. Fuck you, sports. Okay, I'm, baking I'm it sports. Is. Fine. I'm sports overload. Baking. No, it is. no, uh, no. If it's for this game, just do lacrosse. If it's for this game, just nope, do lacrosse. No, can't do lacrosse. Professional. That is professional, okay. jerk. Okay, jerk. Here goes. Okay, or you could do hockey. In you could do hockey seconds, or lacrosse. Pick name, your picker, pucker. Name as many lacrosse teams as you possibly can that play professional. Lacrosse. Yes, go. Uh, fuck the Avalanche. Fuck it, I can see it. The okay. Whip Snakes, the Atlas, the need a fact checker. <laughs> fuck, Whip Snakes. Atlas, what's the one with the red? And then there's the green one and the blue. Oh, and then there's that other guy. What color is he? And then your jerk. And also the flyers. Just stop. The, Just stop. The Blackhawks. <laughs> Just stop. The, the, we moved to hockey the, pretty quickly. Avalanche is also hockey. Is that all? I have to fact check your three in the first place. Two of them sound ridiculous enough to be lacrosse. No, teams. and one of them's in North Carolina. And I didn't even. I, these are all in the PLL, and the um, I didn't even name anybody in Carolina because they're they're not like the Canes. That's someone else. Um, the Whip Snakes. I don't even like the Whip Snakes. They're stupid and not very winning. Atlas is the team to beat, actually. Okay, my point was. <laughs> 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 not sure I have one. I'm just sure that two, two in 30 seconds as your favorite sport really, really supports your I don't fucking watch sports if Thank not you. held at gunpoint Thank or my you. kid Thank isn't you. playing. Thank you. Thank you. I could have done a lot better with competitive baking shows and I don't even watch those because they <laughs> irritate me now. Um, Amy, in 30 seconds. has second, to become competitive. Oh, go. Amy, in 30 seconds, name as many chefs as you can. Go. Anthony Bourdain. Giada De Laurentiis, even though she's a fake. Uh, I was going to say Pruenza Schuler, but she makes skirts. Um, chef, 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 chef. Aubrey um, Amari, the chocolate guy. Fucking who are chefs? I know them all. Ooh, that one in Milan who makes the cheese. He's great. Who's another chef? Who's chef? Um, yes, chef. Fuck. Fuck, fucker, Bucky. Just stop. I, Just stop. No, you did no, the same. I know chefs. You did the I same. I know chefs. <laughs> I know a chef. Chef, yummy. Why don't you look at the iron chefs? Like, start there and just. Oh, ble- Chef Quack Cora. Um, uh, Robert Irvine. Bobby Flay. Even oh, though Bobby what he does is Flay, grill. Please go suck a fucking corn hash. Bobby fucking Flay. All right. Um, We're done. Bobby. I love you, Bobby. Have a seat. Fuck off. We're- Where's the other. Oh, 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 a Barefoot Contessa. What's her name? Ina Garten. I'm looking. I've got a wall of cookbooks. Well, then that makes you. Julia um, Child. (laughs) That's the Um, first one you found on your wall of cookbooks. Well, it's actually Mark Bittman. All hail. But um, he's not really a chef. Um, It's over. It was over like two and a half minutes ago. It's never over. Was it over when I say it's over? Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Pearl Harbor? Germans. He's rolling. He's on a roll. (laughs) He's rolling. Let him go. (laughs) Guys, I spent time. Who's that one that makes Indian food accessible for us? Not Nadia. Asking people. She's like tall and lanky. I've left. I've left this far, far behind. Um. (laughs) I spent time asking people over the last week what their top five favorite Otto movies Lange. are. Mm. Otto Lange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
uh, what their top five favorite movies are. So I want you to know that <laughs> I would fail that too. Fuck off. No, it's not failing. Your top five favorite movies are your favorite movies. You can't fail shit like that. They're your. You it's too hard. It's you're so absolute. No, the world it can change fluid. in a week. It could change in a week. But I had to say right away, Fletch. Mm-mm. And then I thought, I really need to see Fletch again. Doesn't even make my list. Did you watch the new one? No. Can I borrow your <laughs> towel? My car just hit a water buffalo. Come on. That's genius. She's standing there in a towel. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Dr. Rosenfetus. I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, it's so good. Anyway, after my Passover bummer, I got a text from a friend who told me about her dream. And in the last few weeks, dear listener, you might remember clearly we have discussed how you show love and how you like to express all, all the all the show lovey things. And I want you to know that I got a text from my girlfriend who said, I want to thank you because last night you were in my dream. And she told me quickly what her dream was and it fits everything I want people to think and know about me. So I am on schedule. I am on track. I am doing the right thing. She said in this text, I just woke up from the weirdest dream. You were in it and you brought me snacks. <gasps> Do you even oh, need to hear anything else? I kind of don't. I feel like I was loading up a nice long paragraph to walk us through. And instead, I have a nice I long, I have a short paragraph, but nonetheless, I brought her snacks. She said it was about a meeting. It was a target. I, I got I couldn't get on the boat with everybody else because it was at a target you needed a boat to get to I had to pee and by the time I came back everybody was gone and I had to rely on a dolphin's fin to get me there and pull me home very bizarre either way none, none of that's as interesting Melissa, as comma thanks yeah. for the snacks and I thought see finally it's paid off like it's so deep in her subconscious that I am the human who brings snacks that I feel my job is done is it done this. Is it done? It's never done. You have more snacks to bring us. Okay. But that that being known as the snack lady is really all I've ever wanted. And I've never really realized. I've never known that's all I've ever wanted. But to see it in black and white really confirmed for me, you're on the right track. And I haven't felt that way since realizing I need a third <laughs> fucking act. And ah. Amy thinks I should open a rescue. So not well, since snacking, then. Snacking is a critical part of life. I'm just here to tell you, and you've mastered it. That's well, a skill for you. I haven't mastered it until I've done it competitively, <laughs> according to you. I have learned that there is a new category of snacking, and it's called competitive snacking. And this, of course, refers to my nature to be heralded as the best snack mom who ever signed up a genius. Indoors, yes. Okay, so... I specific, I strategized my snack. I overprepared, wildly overdelivered, and yet I still have triumphed in a way that even I had not foreseen. Okay, let's here's, hear it. Here's how it goes. Here's how it goes. So you get the whole season to sign up for snacks for this team of 38 souls. That's a lot of That's snacks. That's a lot of kids, yeah. And, and they're, they're not all, kids. They're enormous. They're These are athletes. athletes. Kids, right. These are athletes, and this is mid-game snack so you want it to actually be something that's going to benefit the team fuel them protein if possible gorp so i decided that i was going to select the away game the big away game where they get a coach bus and drive them wow. for four hours into the mountains of georgia to a boarding school right so big long ride and i signed up for both snack on the bus and Snack at the game the next day, right? Little did I know that snack on the bus preceded an immediate game upon arrival. I didn't realize we were playing two schools. I thought we were just riding out there to play the Saturday game and then riding home, and it was like a field trip. No, we were riding out there, and then Friday night had a game. So I loaded them up with the junkiest, shittiest, we're going on a field trip, I'm in middle school snacks you could ever imagine. Do you know those rubber, those crates that have in Lowe's that have the attached hinged lid that you're supposed to put in your garage yeah, with they're, like Halloween They're from the pharmacy. Yeah, we have hundreds the of them. gigantic one. Yeah. It's a tub. Flap, flap. You, gotta, yep, yep. you can't, it's, your arms are more than shoulder width apart. You can't fit through a door with it. It's giant. So I overfilled one of those so much that there was a second box that had to travel. And that was just the snack for the four-hour bus ride. 
just to put it in perspective, okay? I got every conceivable snack that you can even wish for. None of it had protein. It was all sugar. And I got them a freestanding box of something I didn't even know existed. Frito-Lay has done some sort of Latino partnership, partnership where now they have a box of American unrecognizables that are all like, you know, corn limon and all kind of like tacky tacky, you know, blaster butt blasters and all this ridiculous stuff that's made of nothing but nuclearized jalapeno dust. cheddar dust. dust yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> on, Toxic on bark, dust. On bark and flak chips. Like it's the strangest. Uh, none of it was in English. The entire thing. And I was like, how did this happen at Costco? But you're getting in my fucking cart. The entire assortment mix was nothing I'd ever recognized. Legit. Right. Okay. Put that whole box on and they devoured it. And they had heard of it before. So these kids are wise to the ways of chemical of snack debauchery. Of snack dust. So here's my favorite thing. So did I win best of snack? Of course. Because the next day I came loaded with every protein object you could ever imagine. Protein cookies, protein bars, protein shakes, protein drinks, protein, 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 protein. And we won both games. God bless us. What? The game that they yeah. played after all the sugar and and toxic atomic right. dust, they also won that game? They did win, and they, they won more handily than one would have imagined. So that was okay. that was a relief to me because the bus ride itself. So did I win competitive snacking? Yes, I did. Fuck yeah. I won, despite misunderstanding the assignment and also super fucking understanding the assignment. Blew it so out of the water. I, I yeah. won. Okay. Well, speaking of blowing it out of the water... BJ's Little did I know that based on the sign up genius, the person who signed up for drinks would decide to not show up with the drinks for the bus. So I sent them with all this toxic blasto dust for four hours with nothing and to no drink. No drinks and no drinks. And so the after report that I received was hilarious that their mouths were on fire. And they were just basically banging on the windows, help us, because they couldn't, <laughs> they don't know what had fucking happened to them, right? But here comes the real kicker. This is my favorite, okay? I didn't intend to fuck them up this way, but maybe they just got mad like carpenter ants and then took to the field. They caught and on it fire and then, yeah. Okay. Fuego! All right. So here's my other thing. There is one member of this team who you've heard about before, and he's good for at least two penalties every game because he's crazy. And his name is Daniel, and I've talked about Daniel before. Good old Stan. I didn't realize. Wait that a Stan, minute. Wait a minute. Yes. Not Stanley or Daniel. He's Staniel. I call him Staniel because it must be. So done. he's Stanley or Daniel. I don't know what he is. They call him Stan. I call him Staniel. So Staniel is on the bus. Okay. And Staniel decides that he is going to ignore the medically diagnosed reality. That he has celiac disease. Oh, fuck. What is he? Legitimately, eat? He legitimately has been diagnosed with celiac disease. Card-carrying member. What do you Not eat? fucking what do you kidding. Eat? He has decided that it's not going to hold him back. <laughs> so he eats whatever the fuck he wants and then decides to shit up the bus toilet to stank it for everybody on the four-hour trip. So it was so bad let me get that they sent straight. him, no, no, that they sent him from the back of the bus, they said they sent him, quote, crop dusting. They would send him up to the coaches so he could drop his farts and then come to the back of the bus. So he befouled the entire, he literally fucking got a foul on the bus. Stan, what are you doing? I saw it firsthand because I didn't realize this. It only came to my attention when we happened to drive him home because nobody wanted him on the bus. So he came home with us. And the four-hour ride home. And we stopped for pizza. And that's when I learned, oh, you're not allowed to have gluten? He's like, yeah, don't let it bother me. And he consumed breadsticks and gluten and fried cheese. And then got in my car. And I thought, what have I done? Lord, what have I done to deserve this? It's a, it's a, it's a problem. It's a problem. Did you have to stop again on the roadside and we watch have somebody a lot of, duke it we, out? It was a temperate day and we have great windows. So we just let him down and he let it rip. And it's a it's a trouble. On the one hand, props to this kid. I'm not going to allow my medical condition to dictate my life. Instead, I'm just going to ruin everybody else's life because I would like pizza. <laughs> That's the truth. You have never wanted pizza more a day in your life until it is either Passover or you discover that you are pizza intolerant. And there is no way for you to break that shit down and you will stank up a car. So 
You never know how good you have it until that good is gone. Amen. Amen. Wrote a Amen. Pun. So there's so I bought so many snacks that the tub with the leftover snacks Ooh, leftover. is still sitting in what we call the box, which is the equipment. Um, it, there's a giant room for mostly storage of equipment, but they go in there and change and do this. They call it the box. So it's in the box. And then after practice, they go in there and keep eating from the snack kitty. That I have so copiously provided. For so them. I don't want to sound naive because my children excelled in things like mm, music and writing. And Noble pursuits all. Yes. There was some mm-hmm. sort of book club that both of right. my kids had joined. And Words okay. And you know what? Banners were received. Bring it. And they had to read Communication. For their that's a great skill. Right. It translates wonderfully over to the sports field. Good for you. Yay. So my They'll kids not there. as They'll much on the sports field. Back in my day, I <laughs> cut up oranges oh, and God. I mixed up some gorp, good nope. old raisins and peanuts, and I put in M&Ms, which made it like, woo, not carob, like that crunchy mom on the corner. I had, I was a winner and I wouldn't even be allowed on your bus. With no. <laughs> if you come at me, even if there are fucking clementines or mandarins or those little tiny baby ones that, it, what do they call them, cuties, that have been pre-peeled. No, all those become is um, uh, grass high velocity items. Yeah, they just lob them at each other in walls and floors and things. There's no chance. Use your head. No, you can't give them balls of food. You can't. I mean, I gave them mochi, but at the same time, it's chocolate and that's sticky. So they definitely were going to eat that. It was brown sugar chocolate mochi. That was one of my snacks. I M and M's, all different kinds of granola, pirate's booty, all of the weird fuegos. I can't even remember. Gummy bears, You're goldfish crackers, hungry. a thousand kinds. This was the junk food bin. And then I had those. If you go down the protein, prepackaged protein aisle, I had all of the proteins. Was, oh, my God. Hey, Amy. I'm so impressed. <clears throat> I should be because I'm fucking great. Amy, in your life, from your family, husband, world, do you ask for what you need? Nope. Do you Why? Am I supposed to? I wouldn't get it. I've, I've long since learned that if I ask for what I need, it's not coming. So I either make it for myself or I stuff it down deep like a light switch. Yeah. So it's uh, that's how that works. That's how that works. No, I'm not getting anything that I need. I actually was in an argument with my husband this very morning Ooh. about asking for something that Brian! I need that I didn't that I didn't get. And I said, here, th- we're going to call this Exhibit A in the divorce proceeding. That's what we're getting ready to call this. Okay? Okay. And he's like, oh, he, 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 funny. I'm like, this is not fucking funny. It's my life. Yeah, no. Do you ask for what you need? It's not coming. It's not coming. Well, I think my issue is I wait for everyone to read my mind. And when that doesn't happen, I get frustrated and, and I... I let that be known. I let my frustration be known that people couldn't read my mind. It is the least productive way of having a successful life slash relationships or whatever. And I want to work on it is kind of the point that I'm getting towards. How, I mean, I once gave my husband a book two, we like two moves ago that said, why can't you read my mind? Like it was this psychologist wrote it and what to look for. I don't for. know that that's entirely, I don't know that that's entirely true. So let's pick it apart because I think you may have some of the tendencies that I have and mine are absolutely cultural, multiple generational, multiple cultures, cultural. It's a, it's part of my faith tradition. It's part of my, you know, nationality tradition. It's, it's all baked in there on both sides, Italian, uh, Irish, Catholic, all the same. And that is, I am hardwired. It's even if I was not born into this inclination, it was beaten into me that this is the only path in life. This is the way. You're a Mandalorian. Focus on others. Focus on others. Delivering the best that you possibly can for others. Whatever your best is, it's not for you. It's for others. Because the implied consent in that, the implied agreement in that life is that all others are equally operating under this same system. So that when you're continuously doing the best for others, that benefits everybody. It creates a more livable space, but also you're never going to get left with nothing because everyone is, that's how the world is. People are also working in your best interest all the time. Do you find that? On 
on some level, I know that the universe is working in my long-term best interest for sure. I absolutely, you cannot shake me from that belief. Everything is always working out for me all the time, regardless of what I think or do. A hundred percent yes. However, something has shifted. The record has scratched with my own children who somehow were separated from the four-hour weekly immersion in multiple generations all sitting around the same table and going to church at the same time in the same church every week for 20 years, upbringing that I had, they somehow missed that. And so their inclination is to receive all of this excessive goodness that I pile into, around, and for in support of their life and then say thank you and walk off down the street, as I like to say, snapping your fingers with your dick out. That's how I'm constantly <laughs> referring to my children, right? You just walk down the street with your dick out. That's how they are. Woo! la la li li Not thinking about me at all. Or not where thinking about Or from not where their about plenty others. came. Right. Right. There are plenty of kids in their worldview who are not like that, who immediately walk onto a someplace and say, we're going to leave this better than we found it, which is a phrase that I heard every day of my life for my entire life. We're going to leave this place better than we found it. Doesn't matter if it's clean, clean it nicer than when you got here. Doesn't matter if everybody has what they need, give them more. Fix it, make it nicer, help someone else, hold the door, carry the thing, pick up the bag, don't allow them to. Your children are often like this, holding the door, stand up, do the, the niceties, right? My kids don't do that. They don't do it. It doesn't come naturally to them. And I remind them, and the hardest part about it is their souls are like that. In their souls, in their hearts, in their stated desires, and in their long-term actions, they absolutely are community-minded. They're focusing on others. They're trying to do the right thing. But in the day-to-day practice, in the obvious nature of it, it's a little bit like handwriting. They just present like serial killers. They don't (laughs) do the task. Their handwriting is a disaster, right? Is that really a measure and a marker of their education? Yeah, I kind of think it is. How could they have gotten this far and still not be able to physically sign their name? But that's where we are, right? So all of that said, culturally, to bring it back to you, which is the reason that I started this whole thing, I wonder if it's less about not asking for your needs and more about living and demonstrating a life where you expect reciprocity when it doesn't come. I don't expect, I don't do good works because I demand or expect good works to come back to me. It's difficult to separate those two. It makes it sound like that's what I want. It's quite the opposite. I do good works because that's the way fundamentally I believe the world works. And so that fundamental belief should translate to all others. I would expect them to be doing the same as me. So I'm not thinking I'll never get mine. I'm not, it's not even in my, because everybody always gets something. The world is taking care of the world, right? So on some level, when the reciprocity doesn't come, then it's very easy to start saying, well, you should have known that because that's the way the world works. You sh- why wouldn't I need something that you need? How is that you failing to communicate? Where instead, could it be that your expectation is that you want to be treated either equally to, or let's be honest, a little higher than others <laughs> in your community circle? And shouldn't they be giving you a little bit of nice props? My team, my people treat me so meanly. They treat me so negatively. They really do. And I have super understood that to mean that is their way of making me equal with them in the highest sense, right? That I am venerated because they love me to the degree that I am among them. I am the same as them. My my kids, right? They they you know joking around and knocking me down a peg. There's not some wall in between us where it's like there's a separation there. I would like there to be unearned respect. I feel like that's we were raised to give adults unearned respect, and that's gone, and that's been hard to take. But I also have come full circle to say I kind of do like that there's a relationship there where anything goes. I'm in the inner circle. I hear shit that I don't want to hear because it's safe. And that's the kind of relationship we have. Right. I'm not talking to my parents about BJ's and my PJ's, but my kids do. I know every fucking bit and I don't want to. But at the same time, I kind of get it. So long story short, I feel like it's not your fault. Is it really? Well, really, I just started asking if if you, if you ask for what you want or need um, and your answer is no, does that mean no? Does that mean you don't get what you want or need from the people in your life? 
Fundamentally, yes. Okay, well, that's actually the real problem is that you're not getting what you need. It's it's a communication thing, and it's just something I'm bringing up now, surface-like, for you to start thinking about and maybe see if some of the disappointments that you find or frustrations or, you know, those brick walls that we as moms and partners uh, always wind up running into in our lives. And I feel like I've found enough TikTok therapists who have asked me, okay, Melissa, but are you asking for what you need? And then I thought about Passover and how I spent like a night thinking, well, I didn't chase this either and I didn't find plans. And now that I know that this is somewhat important to me, I expressed it with the family we saw on the second night and they said, well, we're not going to let that happen again. And I thought, okay, uh, okay. Saying what you think and feel is really the only way. I mean, I know you read my eyeballs popping out of my head and my eyebrows and actually deaf people read cues like that way better. But if you don't say something, if you feel something, say something is not a thing. It's if you see something, but but if there's something you need or want, what could it hurt to express it? Like, what could it hurt? It could only lead to, I guess, with teenage boys, it could lead to mocking and it could lead to no, terrible it could, things. It could, hurt, it could hurt you in disastrous, catastrophic ways. Let's just call it what it is. So it's a very brave act to ask for what you need. To be vulnerable? Well, I don't know that it's vulnerability. I think it's the reality that when you request something and it's denied you, the reject- rejection is triple fold. So the, we, anyone with a logical brain, which is not always the best way to move through life with your emotional state, anyone with logic is going to say, well, why would I set myself up for triple rejection yeah. when I could simply not ask or I could fulfill it some other way? And then if it comes, it comes. It's great. I get it. But I also don't get the triple rejection when it doesn't. Right. So it's that's that's the hardship of specifically asking and then being denied. So that's why. It's so brave and so wonderful and so powerful to absolutely say, look, I'm going to ask for what I want and whatever the response is, I'm going to keep asking and I'm going to keep creating in my life to get what I need for myself. And the wants and needs are different here. When you fundamentally need something. Okay. Right. I have a perfect example for you. My husband listened to Howard Stern and he heard Dr. Agus say, you need as a human seven hugs a day to release those endorphins, to give you that, like you need as a human, that contact, that, that sounds hug. great. Give, I love it. give, get whatever it is, seven hugs a day. So my husband works a 12 hour shift. He comes home and he's, he crawls into bed. He goes, tomorrow's 14 because he's that doubling mean? down. Cause he didn't get his seven. He wasn't home or he got one and then tomorrow's 13. Now you have to make it up tomorrow. I think I owe him like 7,000 hugs right now. Why do they only have to come from you? And I I'm said, sorry. I I'm said, sorry. Did that come out? Spread your wings. <laughs> Mallory was home during some of it. And he's like, come here. And I said, run. <laughs> Whatever you do. You going out to lunch today with a buddy? Give him a hug goodbye instead of a handshake or a high five. Get, get your full hug in before you come home. They have accumulated exponentially to the point where there's nothing I can do. So these days I say <sighs> things like. The amount of math involved in this need is really. Yes. For I me. say, hey. Do you think a blowjob is 14 hugs? Like what value would you put on any of these items? I'm going to go take the insoles out of your sneakers and wash them. What is that? Two hugs? Three hugs? What? Like thinking about you and doing acts of service, could that count as a hug? And it's now a game in our house. How many hugs is that? How many hugs could this buy you? So yes. What's the over under on on the shoe insole hug? I'm, I'm curious. How did you, where did you quantify this? I just can't stand still for another 30 second hug (laughs) I just just are you kidding yeah it's a lot you're not okay uh we're taking a huge boob leg here Um, in my head I still have 1200 to go so this one seems like a waste of my time do you yeah still love your husband we'll have order in the court we'll have order in the court do not reclaim your time the witness is directed to answer the question carry on do you or do you not enjoy Hugs. I love hugs. Do you or do you not enjoy hugging your husband? I do, yes. 
So what's your fucking problem? 2,300 of them, and uh, the it's more daunting. More is more! No. More is more. <laughs> more. More is so much more. Just just shut up and do it. Do you get hugged out? Do you get hugged out? Yeah, I don't I don't like this. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to just Dr. you want to hug. Dr. wants to quantify Come over how we're and get a hug. Right. Gross. I, that's the thing where I'm like, I don't want to hug you now cuz you're fucking weird. Don't quantify <laughs> this. <laughs> that's so mean. Please, I know he's listening. I love you, Stuart. I do. <laughs> Say it again. Stop. <laughs> stop with the math. It's Jesus. Why did you if make that's hugs a sure math? way if you want to kill a hug boner, the best way to do it is to start tabulating a kiss on your number 15 and I've got a running abacus. Let me go upstairs and make sure I've got a gold star on hug today. Do you not listen? No. Don't look at my calculator history. Like what <laughs> are you doing? I do not want <laughs> to subtract seven for every uh, time. What would sex be? Like all of a sudden everything's value is only in hugs now. This is a $30 well, who was it? manicure. I mean, going, but that's how what many I'm saying. Hugs going, is it? Right. Going <laughs> back to Dr. TikTok, my favorite doctor, he was saying that you are responsible for your own orgasm, right? I don't disagree. Which was with kind that. of a, which was kind of a crazy. I've said it before. It was like a revolutionary, revelatory thing, because of course you are, and it's why is that news? But at the same time, it's super big fucking news, in that the other person has nothing to do with it. So in the sense that you are responsible for when and how and all of these things right so isn't hugging the same way if you need physical contact from someone else you have to he ask permission to lo- you can't he just doesn't go have take to- it no i don't mean that in this context <laughs> he doesn't have to look at you and say you are withholding right he can initiate and say come here just wrap his arms around you he doesn't have to have the running you know slide rule across the top of the <laughs> kitchen i like the, the abacus cue. bring the abacus right back. i like right that. <laughs> it's like it doesn't have to fucking be that like okay i got one i gotta get how can i get another one and you know what if you're conniving so much that you need to physically track your touching i think you need to quit your job and come home and just crawl into bed with me thank you it's full-time snuggle with your tablet and your wife and just watch and snuggle and that's it who's gonna pay for that lifestyle oh this tosh we make millions on our tits and tots and dicks and dogs weren't you listening I'm absolutely running with that, by the way. It's, this is why this nothing. is why this is why the world is the way. Try it is. to stop me. I'm patent pending. I'm fucking good. So Amy, you had a FaceTime with your oldest son. Well, this is another one. I feel like we're starting a new segment about bragging because last time I had a huge brag and this time I have another huge fucking brag. Did he get it? Did he get it? No, it has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do with me. It's a brag. So he calls me on FaceTime. All the time from college. I'm like multiple times a day. I mean, at least two times a day, every single day, right? Every single day. So yesterday he called and he's talking about nothing as he always is. But he happened to call or the middle of this week, he happened to call when we were out again at a lecture this time. And every time he calls and I don't pick up, I have to text him and say, oh, I can't right now, we're at a blank. Or I'll call him in the middle of a party and I'll say, you see that I'm kind of busy. Do we have to talk about Star Wars right now? You know, all the things. <laughs> okay. It's a new fan theory though. He's really excited. Okay, so he said, God, every time I call you guys, you're doing something. And I was like, you're fucking right, man. I got a life that you can't call me at any hour of the day when I'm not already doing something awesome and it's great. And isn't that wonderful? I was so excited because twofold, one, my son is calling me more than I'm calling him. And number two, I'm too cool to take your call. Fuck you, college. I made it. Woo! Very excited for myself. Happy. That's my brag. Now I want to know what lecture you were you were attending. Super dull. It was for Ronan Farrow. He was sitting there telling us, however, it was the exact day that uh, former President Donald Trump went to New York to be arraigned for his indictment on 34 counts of felony, blah, 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 Douchebaggery, yeah. And, and Ronan Farrow, we had, he was just doing a circuit to talk about, hey, I like to go after these people and stick my finger in their face. And funnily enough, he was referenced in the indictment because I didn't know this. There is a doorman formerly in Donald Trump's building who maintained that Donald Trump has a child out of wedlock 
with another employee of the Trump Tower. And the doorman had this information and he shopped it around to various publications and the Inquirer bought and buried the story, catch and kill. And Ronan Farrow is the one who broke that story. And nobody has denied any of the facts in this allegation. They've simply denied that catching and killing the story was illegal, which I find very quizzical. Anyway, so he was there totally unrelated to what was happening topically, but it happened to happen on the very day so that it was a really, really uh, lively conversation. And he is super affected. And I'll tell you what I loved about it is I had to look up three words after I left that discussion, hour and a half long discussion. And that made me feel really good that I could be listening to somebody who challenged, I mean, it was super snotty in a Gwyneth Paltrow-esque kind of a way. He was just really affected and I didn't like that he was using these words that he could have chosen a million other words to suffice. They weren't like the perfect pristine word, but yeah, okay. I mean, at one point he said, he used the word freighted. Something was like freighted with energy. And I'm like, you couldn't just say it was filled with or it was carried with. Like nobody says fucking freighted. Go shove it up your ass. You're just being a dick, right? But polemic, I didn't know outright what polemic meant and I had to go look that up I don't remember what the fucking third one was but anyway so it was interesting that we were out at a lecture doing brainy shit and my son's calling because he wants to talk about um getting to go watch some new movie that's launching the same day as the Barbie movie and he's gonna see them both whatever the other Barbie movie is oh my god is it wrong that I'm desperate to watch two movies that I have no interest had no interest in growing up but all of a sudden are so culty to me that I want in I want to see Dungeons and Dragons oh that did look good didn't it that I don't looks know anything about that so shit. fucking good and I want to see the Barbie movie <laughs> that I comes say out go. I say yes weekend. I say do it bing bing bong it looks yeah. fantastic and why not because Barbie's a, a romp. basic bitch but the whole thing seemed like it was mocking that and how can they do that and use the same font she in the whole she ain't basic baby the f- she's v-i-p the fact that they took this actress who's margot robbie but they made her walk on her toes the entire time because barbie even when you take off her heels still has feet that go like oh my god that you had me at feet like i'm all in And gents, you get to see Margot Robbie's feet. So, yeah. Save yourself some dollars, right? Just buy a ticket instead of all that wiki feet, Miz, that you're doing. Can we really make money? Do sick feet also make? Never mind. I don't really want to know. That's that's not. My feet are really good. I honestly have thought, do I just go to wiki feet? My feet are really good. They're really good. They're really good. I've got good feet. That's I feel like I should give it a try. And my kids, I've asked my kids about this, and they're like, nobody cares about your feet. It doesn't matter if they look good or even if they look weird. The only reason that people like wiki feet is for celebrities. Oh, so if you're celebrity not a celebrity feet. Yeah, so if, if you're not a celebrity, nobody's going to pay you to see your feet. And I'm like, would they, though? And then I thought, I'm really having a conversation about fetishizing my feet and asking my kids advice. With so maybe your let's, son. Change, right. let's change this conversation. So I did. Maybe. Maybe. Let's change it. I mean, go to the experts. Yeah, so... Um, I don't I I have questions about um, OnlyFans and I definitely go to my kids for that, but they're not on OnlyFans. I would freak the fuck out if the money we are giving our children to sustain life and existence was going to pay for feet pics or OnlyFans or anything like that I that would really that would that would hit me deep in my soul as opposed to if it was only spent on tits and tots and dicks and dogs I'd be fine with it BJ's and PJ's uh who doesn't love Ben and Jerry's but yeah uh, it's it's uh I don't want to know that my kids are spending our money on things that and and why is it that all of these children in college are on dating apps did we not send you to a pool of people your age? Walk out of your fucking bedroom. Go to a lounge. Go sit outside. There are people your age, dateable. Some undateable. Yes, you are correct. Some date. Go find them. I- I'm so sorry that this Instacart culture has you on a dating app. You can still be cute and text and be fun and flirty 
without having to go on an app and catfish. It's just so fucking gross. Do people no longer meet people out of doors? I'm sure that they do. It's difficult outside of high school, college, right? Because in college, you're so busy and you're migrating from place to place. It's just easier. It's easier. The screening is easier. And frankly, it's cheaper. Do you know how expensive it is to go on a first date? That's crazy for someone who you may not even like. You're going to drop $100 when these you're These kids in, aren't doing that. Not in, not yes, in college. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Drinks or a cocktail is 20 bucks. They are underage. You're going to get something about to eat. 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds on these apps. You're not going out for drinks. You're going to grab a sandwich and sit outside or go for a walk on campus. Like, why are all of these things so expensive? Well, look at that in our next episode of BO about fuck you. Yeah, we should change the name of this show to, <laughs> to what? We love not to help, so fuck you. Gold star. There's an IQ. There is an EQ. We all know that's yeah. your emotional quotient. I have a lyric Q. Woo! LQ or LP or for the OGs. For the OGs. Yes, I'm an LP. I <laughs> honestly got to, I told last week, I said, there's always a lyric or even a, a, a movie quote. There's always a quote somehow in my head. Everybody speaks to me and I hear those words in that string chain in its original form for me in a movie or song. And all of a sudden I'm singing that song. And somebody this week said to me, what is going on in your head? Like, why did that take you all the way to that movie, that song? That's not at all what we were talking about. I, I don't know. You're like, it's because you like the fucking Hulk. I'm an LP. Okay. <laughs> no, you're like the fucking Hulk. They don't fucking get it. They just identified the entire problem. You are the fucking Hulk. And when everybody says, hey, Hulk, hey, Hulk, what happens when you get angry? How can you control it all the time? How do you do it? And he goes, you know what my secret is? I'm angry all the time. I'm always angry. Yeah. You're not going to a different lyric. They run it on a loop. Constantly. Stupid. You just happen Fuck to you. fit in for five seconds with what was already happening in there. Bingo. So, dear listener, if you look at me and I Welcome look a little party, pal. glazed over and I just look like there's something else going on. It is only because there is. <laughs> There's a lot going on. <laughs> and if you want to hear more about it, keep coming back. Keep listening. Keep showing up for us. We will keep showing up for you. Much to Amy's chagrin. I will drag her back weekly and force her to sit by and listen to my stupidity and share her beautiful insights to my stupidity. Thank you once again for coming out. We hope we've turned you on since you've turned us on. We love you guys. Please find us. Write us at brilliantobservations at gmail.com. Find us on socials, Listen Brilliant, or just on Facebook at Brilliant Observations or Brilliant Obs Squad. We'll love you. See ya. I think we're saying bye. bye.